Cyclocosm has finally landed corporate backing for this podcast. Please welcome new title sponsor, Megalized Bicycle Corporation. Megalized founder and CEO, seen here with riding buddies Lord Voldemort, Dick Cheney, and Ricardo Rico, saw Cyclocosm as a fantastic way to reach, quote, people who actually care about bike racing, unquote, noting his brand's current market dominance among bike path commuting champions and those who enjoy filling their garages with shiny objects. Without further ado, we bring you Megalized, How the Race Was Megalized, powered by Megalized. The day's action began with a break, probably the weakest of this classic season, with only a single World Tour rider represented, Quick Step's Dario Cataldo. And this became rapidly apparent as the race entered its hillier sections and the Italian found himself unintentionally riding away from his companions on more than one occasion. The downhills proved similarly tricky for his co-escapees as Simon Geschke slid out on a bend around 92k to go. But after some encouragement from the crowd and some gauze of questionable sterility, he was able to soldier on. Pre-race contender Sammy Sanchez had no such luck after his early mishap, finding only a cigarette, a small dog, and a beer among the roadside supporters. Around 80 kilometers to go, Pierre Roland, Vasily Kiryenka, and David Lallet bridged up to the break, nearly doubling its numbers. But the BMC and Lotto-led peloton was content to give the group some rope, as the wind, rain, and unyielding succession of climbs took their toll. Indeed, only the looming specter of La Redoute finally coaxed another team, Australia's Green Edge, into lifting the pace further and reducing the leader's gap to seconds. But that climb proved far from decisive. While many riders gave it a go, driven by glory and the combined support of every motorhome in Northern Europe, BMC's unyielding tempo kept any move from getting away. The only serious casualty was Alejandro Valverde, who came to grief on such a steep section of climb that his teammate could barely push him off without falling. The break, reduced to Roland, Kirienka, and a yo-yo in Cataldo, remained free. BMC retained their iron grip on the field over the top of La Redoute and into the following Côte de la Roche à Facon, and this overdriven effort would prove their undoing. While it did finally reel in the escape and reduce the field to a handful of riders, it also put Liquigas's Vincenzo Nibali at the front of a lined-out peloton on a steep, decisive climb, and the Italian made the most of it, powering over the top and into the descent. Inexplicably, Lotto's Yella Vanander and Gilbert himself both let the Italian ride away. While Vanander could at least argue that his odds were better staying back in the group with teammate Jurgen Vandenbroek, Gilbert had no excuse for calling off his chase. The Belgian just looked back at 18k to go and decided that the gap behind was more appealing to cross than the gap ahead. It was a terrible decision. Not only did it leave the reigning champ fully isolated in a group of 15, but the fact that so many other squads had two and three riders meant the go-to tactic would be trading off attacks, quite possibly the least efficient way to bring back an escape. With so many of the teams represented in each successive split, the duty of closing the gaps fell almost invariably to Gilbert. As Nibali's advantage hovered between 20 and 40 seconds, Astana, who'd placed three riders in the final selection, broke the surge and sit-up cycle, getting Maxime Iglinski away with Fletch Fallon winner Joaquim Rodriguez. Body language told the tale as the duo hit the coat to St. Nicolas, and the flying Cossack quickly gapped the Katusha rider. While I loved the timing and commitment of Nibali's attack, he either overdid the effort or underjudged the distance. On the final climb to Aan, the legs were obviously gone, and Iglinski attacked and dropped the Italian just outside the final kilometer, eventually cruising around the last bend with enough gap to savor the win. Nibali limped in for second, and Gasparato, fresh off his armchair ride as the group vainly chased his teammate, just nip Thomas Volkler at the line for third. Cyclocosm Industries, this is Cosmo. Hi, this is Linda calling from Megalize Affiliate Services. I just have some feedback from my manager on the latest HTRWW draft. Okay. If you like it, we just need you to change a few things. Such as? Well, first when a rider attacks, you're supposed to mention how much better it would have been if you'd been riding from Megalized. But what if the attacker already rides from Megalized? Oh, let me play the guitar riff. The guitar riff. Yes, we sent you an MP3 with your contract. Yeah, must not a... And our carbon wheels. You need to mention how perfect they are for charity rides. Especially when it's raining. 140 PSI, right? I'm not sure what that means, but just mention it. Also, I don't know who these other people are, but obviously the CEO doesn't ride with Lord Voldemort because he died at the end of the last movie. No, it's just what the studio wants you to think. Also, we were told that there'd be a slideshow on weight loss tips. So if you could just add that, we... Hello? Cosmo? Hello?